Hello everyone and welcome to GLB Productions. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the BeachTech DXA HDV, a camcorder audio adapter. Now what this device allows you to do is to connect XLR connectors to a camera that has only a mini jack or eighth inch TRS audio input. I'll give you an example of such a camera. This is one of the cameras that I use for my YouTube channel. As you can see, it's a Canon Legria HFM 400. Now, the picture quality on this camera is excellent, but as you can see, it has only a mini jack audio input connector. So if I'm taking audio from a mixing console or even directly from a microphone like an SM58, I need a way to convert the XLR output of those devices to a mini jack that will allow me to plug into this camera. And that's what the DXA HDV does. It allows you to add pro-level audio connectivity to a consumer or prosumer camcorder. And as you'll see, it's designed to sit just underneath the camera itself. Now this unit was purchased by GLB Productions about one year ago, and I've used it in lots of different situations, both to take the audio directly from microphones, as well as to take the line level signal from mixing consoles, recorders, and that kind of thing. I found it to be very well built, extremely reliable, and very versatile. So I'd like to bring you this review and user guide. As you can see, it comes in a box. Uh, the unit is, of course, much smaller than this. So the sleeve comes off. And within that, you have just a plain white box. And you can see when you open it up, there is a user manual. This user manual is one of the best that I have ever seen for any type of professional audio equipment. We'll go through that in detail. You have some reticulated foam. Uh, beneath that, you have the unit itself and the accessory cable that it is supplied with. Now, this cable, as you can see, is curled, so it gives you some stretch there, and it has gold-plated connectors. Uh, this is designed to connect the output of the interface to the mini jack input of your camera, and I found that it's... Um, I've used it every single time I've used the unit itself. Uh, the unit is very well packed as you can see surrounded on all sides by foam so it's not going to get damaged in transit okay now here's the unit itself and uh, i'll begin by giving you just some simple specifications first of all the size the unit is 5 by 5 by 2.5 by 1.5 inches um, metric dimensions are 140 by 64 by 38 millimeters. So if you compare it in size to the camera that I was showing you earlier, you can see that it's about the same size as a um, consumer or prosumer video camera, which is a good thing because it means that it fits very nicely underneath those. The weight of the unit with batteries is 10 ounces or 280 grams. Okay, now let's run through the features of the unit. Uh, beginning with the bottom of the unit, you can see there's a couple of things there. First of all, there is a standard tripod socket and a hole for the guide pin that is found on video tripods. This is to ensure that your uh, unit does not start spinning around on you. There is also a screw. This connects to the male thread on the top of the unit, as well as its own spring-loaded guide pin, you can see there. And this is to allow you to mount the adapter underneath your existing camcorder so that the two of them become uh, one unit effectively. Uh, this screw, as you can see, goes right through. If I turn the uh, top, you can see the one on the bottom turns. And it is deliberately oversized to allow you to use a coin or a large flat blade screwdriver uh, that, you know, 
uh, might be found on a multi-tool or something. Uh, I found this to be very, very high quality steel. As you can see, I've used it for a year. Uh, there's been no stripping, uh, no burring of any kind, and I've had no issues with the connection to my camcorders. There is also a full rubber pad here, which helps um, to stop the camcorder moving around on top of the unit and also gives you a little bit of padding so that uh, you don't strip the adapter on the bottom of the camcorder itself. Um, you'll notice that the pad is not quite square to the top of the unit. Now, I don't know if that is a manufacturing issue or if they did it deliberately that way to cant the camera slightly on top. Um, in practice, I found that this didn't really make any difference to the function of the unit itself. Coming around to the front of the unit, you have the battery cover. Now, the folks at Beach Tech have designed this such that it can be placed either way. The cover is completely symmetrical, and as you can see there, you can have it with the tab on the left or on the right, and it functions equally well. This is good because obviously, if you're changing your battery in a high stress situation, you don't want to be fumbling around with the cover and inadvertently end up breaking something. So that was really good. Inside, you can see um, there is a ribbon here to help you extract the battery and the unit runs on a standard 9 volt battery. Battery life on this unit uh, is 3 hours with an alkaline battery assuming no phantom power and 8 hours with a lithium battery, also assuming no phantom power. Now, I have found that that 3 hour limit can in certain cases be a little bit restrictive, so it's really important if you are employing this unit that you use good quality alkaline batteries and that you start your events with a new battery. Even if there's no low battery indication, you always want to start with a new battery. Um, just put this cover back on. Um, um, it snaps in place very securely. I've never had trouble with losing it or it coming off even uh, when I'm hand holding the entire unit. Um, on the right side, you can see there's um, just the labeling there, Beach Tech DXA HDV, uh, my company sticker as well as the date that I purchased the unit. Now, Beach Tech have deliberately left this side of the unit clear because, as most of you will realize, the majority of camcorders are designed for right-handed use, meaning that the strap is on the right side of the unit as viewed from the uh, user's perspective, and they're designed to be held with your right hand. So when the unit and camera are connected, you can see that you can actually hand hold this entire combination of camera and adapter. So that's the reason why Beach Tech did not put any connections on the right side of the unit. Now we'll move on to the connections and controls on the left side of the unit. Uh, this is where you'll plug in your XLR connectors. As you can see, they've used high quality locking new trick connectors for both of these. It's important to note that these are not combo connectors, so you will not be able to connect quarter inch uh, TS or TRS jacks. It's designed only for XLR connectors. In between, you can see that there's four switches, there's two phantom power switches, and there's two gain switches. Now, the unit has a left and a right channel, so it is a full stereo interface, and the way in which these are used can be switched, as we'll see later, between stereo and mono. So, first of all, you have 48 volts phantom power switchable for each unit. Now, according to the manual, this is a true 48 volts. It's not 12 or 24 volts. It is a true 48 volts, and the current is up to 14 milliamps regulated by the power supply. You can see that there's a small LED above each of them. If I, uh, just for this, if I switch the unit on, 
you can see that if I enable the phantom power, the lights turn on. And if I disable the phantom power, they slowly turn off. Now, the LEDs here are deliberately not very bright. They're not as bright as the main power LED. And I'm sure that the reason for that was simply to uh, save on the current consumption. Uh, you don't want excessive drain on the circuitry if you can avoid it. In the middle, you have two gain switches. You have a high setting and you have a low setting. The high setting gives you plus 15 dB and the low setting gives you unity gain. The manual actually recommends in its quick start section that you use high as a sort of default setting. Now, at this point, I'm gonna say that Beach Tech has some of the best customer service that I have encountered. I had a question, in fact, I had several questions. One of them was about these gain switches. I wanted to know, should I use high as a default setting when I'm connecting a line level signal or should I go to low? So what I did was I emailed Beach Tech using the email address that is provided in the user manual. As you can see here on the back of the user manual, they give you an email as well as the website of the company. I sent them an email at 6.30 p.m. on a Saturday evening and I got a reply about seven hours later. In other words, Sunday morning, my time, Saturday evening, uh, Canadian time. And this is some of the fastest response that I've received from any company. So I'd like to say well done Beach Tech and a special thank you to Mr. Harry Kaufman from Beach Tech who has been very helpful in answering many of my questions about this unit. In fact, he said, please ask any questions that you might have. We are happy to help. So Beach Tech stands behind its products and they are happy to answer questions from professional users who might like to know a little bit more than is provided in the user manual. Moving on, um, the input impedance of the unit, although it is not stated in the user manual, I asked Mr. Kaufman and he said the input impedance is several kilo ohms. Now he didn't give a specific uh, figure, but he assured me that the unit is fine to use with all low impedance sources. That's important because you should not use this with, for example, a electric guitar or electric bass. It is not designed for the use with high impedance sources. For that, you need a input impedance of several hundred kilo ohms preferably one mega ohm. So this is a low impedance unit only. Below the four switches, you can see you have the output. This is a mini jack output, a metal socket, very high quality as you can see there. And next to it, you have a ground switch. Now in the manual, it says that you should use whichever position gives you the least noise. Now me being curious, I emailed Mr. Kaufman and I said, hey, what exactly does this do? And he very graciously explained that this is actually a ground lift switch. Basically, in the G1 position, the input and output of the unit, the grounds are connected. In the G2 position, they are disconnected or floated. Beach Tech recommends that you use the G2 position to begin with, in other words, grounds disconnected and switch to the G1 position if you encounter hum or buzz from ground loops. Personally, I've always used the G2 position and I've never had any problem with noise. So that is a testament to the quality of the components used as well as the shielding provided by the metal chassis of the unit. And you know, as you can see, the, the unit is generally very, very well put together. If, if I bring this up close to the camera, you can see that pressing in on this switch, there's no flex, the unit, the, the buttons don't go up and down. You know, everything operates nice and positively. There's um, grooves on the switches so that you can easily 
manipulate them with your fingers. Everything feels well put together, very solid and likely to last for a long time. So that's really, really good. Now let's move on to the back of the unit. Uh, this is the part that you can see when you are operating the camcorder. Uh, there is a power switch. Now, as you can see, if I turn this on, it starts out red and then, sorry, I'm trying to let you see the LED. There you go. Um, as you can see, when you turn it on, it will briefly flash red and then it will go green. Green means you're okay. Red means you have low battery. You have two potentiometers on the back and I emailed uh, Beach Tech and they explained to me that these are actually attenuators. Now what that means is that the unity gain position on these is actually fully clockwise. So fully clockwise, you have unity gain, fully anti-clockwise, you are effectively off. So these are not gain controls, these are attenuators. These, on the other hand, are gain controls. The L position is unity gain, H is plus 15. Now the way that these are set is by using these small level LEDs just above them and I'll show you how that is done later. Above each rotary control, you have a line slash mic setting. The mic setting is unity gain. The line introduces a 40 dB pad into the input circuit, allowing you to connect things such as the output of a mixing console or the output, for example, of a, a digital recorder. And finally, on the back, you can see you have an aux input. The aux input is a mono mini jack connector which feeds the right input, as you can see by the line there. And you have a stereo mono switch. Now, basically with the unit set to stereo, the left input is connected to the left output and the right input to the right output. If you switch it to mono, the right input is connected to both outputs and the left is connected to both outputs as well. So effectively, it allows you to use only one input if, for example, you're using only a single microphone or a single wireless. Okay, so that's a rundown of the features. Now let's have a look at how you would connect the unit and how it sounds. First of all, I'd like to show you how the unit is mounted and dismounted from a camcorder. The first thing that you do is you would connect the two together. As you can see there, there's a tripod screw here which engages with the tripod socket of the camera itself. You put the two together and you'd screw them together. Now you can use a flat blade screwdriver, but what I found is that a coin actually works better. Uh, if you're watching this in Singapore, uh, one of the new 20 cents works really well. So you just turn that and it engages real positively and just turn it until it's um, just until it's snug. Um, the rubber pad will ensure that the camcorder does not move around on top of the interface and the locating pin will automatically ensure that the camera is pointed more or less straight ahead. Now, Whoever worked at Beach Tech put a lot of thought into the design of this unit. For one, it allows you full access to all of the camcorder functions and features. So as you can see, the screen opens no problem. And you can also access things like the charging port. Uh, you can't change the battery, obviously, um, but you know, there have to be some compromises. And very important, I can actually get my hand, it's a bit hard to show you because of the tripod, but I can actually get my hand into the strap and I can really easily hand hold this entire combination. It's a little bit heavy, but not anywhere near as heavy as a full on professional um, movie camera would be. And I really like that because it means that I can do interviews, I can do run and gun stuff uh, without any problems. 
I still have access to the hot shoe on the camera itself. So if I wanted to connect, for example, a professional shotgun mic to that and run it into the unit and use the second input for a lavalier or wireless handheld, I have a full professional setup right here in the palm of my hand. And I find that I actually prefer this to a camera with XLR inputs simply because it's more flexible. You know, if I need XLR inputs, I screw this on. If I don't, I unscrew it and I have a smaller package. This will also fit very nicely in camera bags. The battery on the DXA HDV is still accessible and it doesn't block things like the camera's uh, built-in mics, uh, not that you'd be using them in this situation. Uh, to remove, all you do is you get your coin and you reverse. Obviously, you want to be careful uh, not to drop the unit off the bottom because uh, when this comes fully undone, it just comes apart. So ergonomically, um, real easy to use and very, uh, very high quality build there. Now, while we're looking at this, I'd like to show you how to use the supplied accessory cable. Once again, lots of thought has gone into this design. They've provided you with two right angle connectors as well as a stretchy cable. And this allows you to accommodate cameras which may not have the input on the same side as the output. So as you can see here on my Canon, the input for the audio is on the opposite side to the output from the DXA HDV. So no problem. I'd simply connect this here and run it around to the other side. And not only does it plug in, it's very low profile. The curliness allows it to sit at the front of the unit. So it doesn't get in the way of your tripod plate. And again, Hand holding doesn't get in the way of the strap. Everything tucks up really nice and neat. And again, well done, Beach Tech. Good design. Oh, and even if you have an XLR connector plugged in here, you can see everything is still clear because of the right angle connectors. Doesn't stick out too much. Nice, neat, clean and professional setup. Now I'd like to show you how to use this unit with a, a microphone level source. For example, a handheld uh, microphone. Say you're doing interviews and you need only a single microphone. Now for this demonstration, we're going to use a Shure SM86. This is a handheld condenser microphone because it will also show you the operation of the phantom power. So to begin with, you would connect the microphone in the normal method. So you take a uh, microphone cable, uh, connect that to the mic, and you'd connect to either, uh, to either of the inputs, either the left or the right. I tend to use the right one uh, just because it's a little bit more accessible um, because of this cable. Now, Beach Tech recommend that with microphones, you begin by setting the gain control to high. We switch the unit on and then enable phantom power. Sorry, it's a bit fiddly to get my fingers in there, but you can do it. Now at this point, remember, we haven't switched the camera on yet. We are going to set gain on the DXA HDV. Now remember, we're plugged into the right input. So we want to set this knob, all right? Now we want to ensure that it is set to microphone because we're using microphones and stereo mono. We will switch this to mono because we are only using a single source for this demonstration. I'm now going to talk into the microphone. Check one, two, uh, check one, two, and you would turn this up until you begin to see level. Now, you'll note that there is level on both channels, even though there's nothing plugged into the left channel. That's because the unit is set to mono. If it was set to stereo, like so, you'd see 
that there was only signal on the right channel, which is where it's connected. Switch it back to mono. And what you do is you, just like setting the gain on an analog mixer, you turn this up until it goes red. There you go. Check one, two. So that's too high. So you'd back it off until it just shows green. Check, check one, two. Check one, two. Check, check one, two. I find that for general uh, handheld microphones, a setting of between 12 and 3 o'clock will generally give you good results. At this point, uh, we've done our gain setting on the Beach Tech, so we can actually switch the camcorder on. As you can see, we're not filming anything here. And talking into the microphone, check one, two, check, check one, two, you can see you have level there. Just to confirm that this is in fact the Beach Tech, if I switch the Beach Tech off, you can see that the level there drops to nothing because obviously with this connected, the camera's internal mics are disabled. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to connect a line level source to the Beach Tech. So we will unplug our SM86 and I'm going to use my uh, Swiss Army cable tester which as you can see here also has a test tone feature. So I'm going to use that as a signal source. I'm just going to send a 1K test tone. So connect to my Swiss Army switch the Swiss Army on to the test tone setting and as you can see here uh, on means I'm sending a one kilohertz test tone now over here I'm gonna set it to the plus four dBU setting so this would approximate the setting from a mixer or other line level device set that to one side and again we are connected to the right channel. If you were doing this in stereo, you'd simply connect to both channels. It works the same way. Now again, before we switch the Beach Tech on, we want to ensure that we are fully anti-clockwise. We want to set this to line level. And we want to set on this side, we want to disable phantom power because obviously mixer doesn't need phantom power on its output and we want to set the gain to low. Switch the unit on. And once again, bring up our gain. There we go. Now, obviously this is a steady 1K tone, which is why the unit, uh, which is why the lights stay steady. Now, unlike in the previous demonstration, you'll find that even with the potentiometer fully clockwise, I don't get a red LED. Now the reason for that is that my gain is set to low. If I were to set the gain to high, you'll find that now I've got two red LEDs and I would need to back this off probably to around 12 or one o'clock before they turn green. Again, it's up to you. You can use high on the beach tech and back off your level here, or which is my personal preference, I use low on the beach tech and just run my um, potentiometer fully clockwise. In other words, unity gain here. I always believe that you should not use amplification unless it is necessary and I've got very good results doing this again we're unity gain here unity gain here because we're already getting a really strong signal into the camcorder itself now we're going to look at how to disable automatic gain controls on cameras that have this ability now one of the things that beach tech say in their manual is that the most common problem in recording professional audio is the hiss generated by the camcorder preamplifiers. 
You cannot completely eliminate all his, but you can reduce it so that it is no longer a problem. Okay? Now, as you can see here, if your camcorder allows you to disable the AGC feature, we recommend that you do so to get the best performance. Set the camcorder to manual mode and the camcorder gain to 20 to 25% of maximum. This will keep gain in the camcorder steady and will avoid the increased noise that occurs during quiet moments of recording. So how exactly do you do this on a camcorder? We're still using our line level setup. Swiss Army Tester is providing a plus 4 dBU test tone. And as you can see, signal is still coming in into the beach tech. So we turn the camera on. Now, in order to set that on my camera, I have to press function and then I go to microphone level. Now, you can see that this is currently set to automatic. What I have to do is I now switch it to manual and I get a uh, scale that goes from 0 to 100. I have personally found that on this camcorder, setting it to 20 or 25 gives me really good results. You can see there that they give you a sort of target to aim for, which is um, the 12 mark. Uh, Beach Tech actually agree with this. In their manual, they mention um, here, um, most camcorders have manual audio controls that will have a built-in VU meter. That's the one that you saw on the screen just now. Set the level controls on the adapter to give you a peak reading of minus 12 dBFS. Now, as you can see, with the gain set to low and the level control fully clockwise, I get exactly that with a line level signal. So I have used this in the past uh, and generally had very good results. Remember that when it comes to audio from video, if you overcook your level in the camera, you're really stuffed. You have no way of undistorting that audio. If your audio level is a little bit low, you can always increase it in post-production. So that's my advice to you. On Canons, uh, use a level in the camera of about 20, run low gain on the Beach Tech with the level control fully clockwise. One of the things that I really like about this company is the thought that they've put into their user manuals. Now, as you can see, this is a relatively thin document, but it contains all the information that you need presented in a very professional, no-nonsense, factual writing style, and none of the information that you don't. It begins with a description of the unit, and then it gives you a quick setup guide. And this is a very methodical step-by-step -step guide to how to get good results without having to read through the entire manual. As you can see, it gives you advice on things like where to set the ground switch, where to set the gain switches, and advice such as do not activate phantom power when using wireless microphones. After that, you have a comprehensive overview of the unit itself. As you can see, there's a diagram there with all the various controls and parts numbered and all of the information given there. Similarly, the side of the unit, very good, tells you things like what do the, uh, how much gain is provided by the gain switch, uh, what does the ground switch do. Then there's a more comprehensive setup guide, which gives you more information about things like installing the battery and how to connect the camcorder to the adapter. More information here. If you'd like to read this, uh, a PDF of this is available online. A full specification section. Now, the Manual does not provide a circuit diagram, 
uh, which is something that I'd like to see. Uh, presumably, Beach Tech have their own reasons for not including this. And on the back, as we've mentioned, contact information, phone number, and email address, both of which are staffed by a real person. And as I've mentioned earlier, they will get back to you. Now, of course, no demonstration or review of the DXA HDV would be complete without letting you hear what the unit sounds like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the unit directly to the camera that is filming at the moment. I will use my Shure SM86 and will set controls as follows. I will set gain to high, phantom power on, and I will start with the control all the way off, microphone set to mono, and then I will slowly increase the controls so that you can hear what it sounds like. I'll deliberately run it into the red so that you can hear what the unit sounds like when it overloads and then we'll conclude this review. Just for reference, the microphone that you have been listening to up to this point is a Rode VideoMic Pro. Okay, here we go. I'm going to disconnect the Rode and plug in the Beach Tech. Okay, I've unplugged the Rode, so you're hearing the camcorder's internal microphones. I just have a, um, a short extension cable here. Uh, this does not come with a unit. Two, check check one two check check one two now you can already hear something because the automatic gain control on the camera is compensating if you notice it's pretty noisy and this is what the uh, manual was talking about check one two check check one two one two check check one two one two now once you get up to about this level, you can see that the level, or rather the noise when I'm speaking, is not too bad. But as soon as I stop speaking, the level of the background noise begins to increase. So what I'm going to do is on the camera now, I'm going to disable the automatic gain control as I demonstrated earlier. Okay, check one, two, check, check one, two. Now, wh what I've done now is I've actually set the level on the camera to 20. And I think you can appreciate the fact that it's a lot quieter. In fact, it's even overloading slightly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to back the level on the camera down to about 15. Okay, the level on the Canon is now uh, set to about 15, and I'm now going to deliberately uh, run the Beach Tech into the red. Check, check, one, two, check, check, one, two, check, check, one, two. So you can hear uh, and see that the Beach Tech is overloading, uh, but it still sounds um, pretty good. Uh, it has a nice sort of analog quality to the overload. Backing it off now, check, check, one, two, check, one, two, check, one, two. So there you are. That's an example of how the Beach Tech DXA HDV sounds. So that's my review of the Beach Tech DXA HDV professional XLR adapter for camcorders. As you can see, the unit is very well designed, has a wealth of features and allows you full control, not just of your gain, but also of the way in which the signal is routed within the unit itself. It's compact, it sounds good, and it has a fairly decent battery life and it's supplied with a useful accessory cable as well as a wonderfully 
well-written, articulate, simple to use user manual. Beach Tech as a company gives good customer support and they will always stand behind their products. In fact, the only thing that I would like to see changed about this unit is this right here. As you can see, the unit is currently made in China. I think that Beach Tech should follow the example of companies like Radial and Yorkville and move their production back to Canada. Yes, it will cost more, but experience has shown that professional users such as myself are willing to pay more to support companies that manufacture in their home country and keep the jobs there and provide the jobs for their own citizens rather than moving it overseas. Having said that, quality control on this unit appears to be excellent. In fact, the only issue uh, that I can see that I pointed out earlier is that this rubber pad is not quite square to the top. As you can see, it's, it's tilted slightly to the right. Apart from that, excellent. So this has been Bruno Luce for GLB Productions. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.